Speaking of somebody who has a, a bunch of good things in him is Robert Redford, who you just did an, <laughs> yes. another movie with. Yes, my fourth. Wow. <laughs> you must have been excited to get that call to work with and him I again. I did. He, call, he bought a book that's called Our Souls at Night, and it's just a beautiful story, and he wanted me to be in it, and I was really, really happy. You know, the only problem with working with Bob is that I just look into his eyes and I kind of fall into his eyes and forget my dialogue. It's kind of like being on your show. Oh, really? You don't know what it's like to be up here and look into her eyes. Well, I guess you do because you see them on television. But it's much harder in real life to look into her eyes and not... Fall in love? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're so sweet. I love you. <laughs> When you see that, the pictures of the two of you together and, and through the years, I think your first film was 1966. And uh, what is that? That was not. I did a movie before that called The Chase. But yeah, that's Barefoot in the Park. That's a good movie. There's The Chase. Right. Wow. What was your question? What, what do you feel when you <laughs> see you're looking in his eyes and you're forgetting? God, what? so good looking. He oh. is, yeah, he's a good looking guy. Oh, yeah, he still is. Yeah. Oh, good kisser? Man. He's a good kisser? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you kiss him in this new movie? Yeah. yeah. So dreamy when you say that. <laughs> so, yeah. but it wasn't nervous. Was it? Was it? Was it like kind of nerve-wracking to work with him again, or did it fall right into place? No, it actually wasn't. It, it was. I realized that I've I've grown up because in the three previous movies I was always in love with him. I fell in love every time, and so if a day went by when he wouldn't speak to me, because you you know there were days when he would never speak to me unless it was part of the script. Really? And it, I always took it personally. Oh my God, he doesn't like me. I did something wrong. And now when he doesn't talk to me, I just say, Hey, Bob, come on, come on. What are you? What? <laughs> So you participated, of course, in the Women's March here in L.A. Oh, gosh. You've, you've done this your whole life. But what was it like this time? What was this march like compared to the other marches you've done throughout your life? It was life? really different. It was. First of all, it was huge. I think in L.A. there were 750,000 people. There were people in baby carriages, and there were people in wheelchairs. Age-wise, the most diverse. There were men as well as women. Um, and it wasn't just like we're going to do a, a march against the war or we're going to do a march, a pro-choice march. This was like all different kinds of issues were, were being uh, embraced in this march. And also, even though there were so many people, you could, you could be in it and feel totally safe. It was like everybody was in a bubble of love. That's, yeah, I heard and that. And man, when you're 70, 750,000 people in bubbles of love, just loving that you're there with each other, that's pretty great. That feels good. Oh. That's how it feels in here. We're in a bubble of love. I know, I know. Um <laughs>